Like you said, there was an important development in Julian Assange's case this past week. Uh, I treat it as a victory. Um, I don't really temper it because if it went the other direction, and we'll get into the details, but you know, he now has the door open and can appeal this decision that the U.S. successfully overturned. He can now go to the Supreme Court and say the high court in, in the U.K. was wrong to side with the U.S. government. And without this decision, which we'll get into, it's possible we would have seen the extradition request sent to the Home Secretary, Priti Patel, in the U.K., which would have been bad because it would have forced the legal team to come up with some way to prevent him from being extradited to the United States. I think right now there are a lot of people who are not talking about the significance of what this decision actually means. It basically is a decision that effectively the rest of the world is looking at the United States and saying, drop this case already. Uh, yeah. This is um, one of those things where there is, they are, the American empire, it's one thing we talk about in politics, how there's a net positive, a neutral, and a net negative to every uh, action and reaction. This is a case where if they pursue this any further, it is only going to be a net negative. Can you talk about where that stands right now based on the judgment that the uh, high court of the UK uh, came down with? Yeah, are they still pushing? Like what, what's going on there from the, on the US side? Yeah, no. So the Biden administration continues to say that, well, they don't say anything. They continue behind the scenes to push this case against Julian Assange. And we saw an illustration of how depraved it is and how cowardly they are in the report on the first year of Biden's administration that the Committee to Protect Journalists did on his press freedom record. I don't know if you know this, but Leonard Downey has been working on these reports for at least the last 10 years in partnership with the Committee to Protect Journalists. He was a longtime reporter for the Washington Post. Um, he, they put together this really good report on the Obama administration um, uh, about his record in his first term um, that showed a lot of things that were ugly that Democrats weren't confronting. And now we've got this report on the first year. And he said, I went to the Justice Department and I asked them about a whole range of issues. And on only one issue did they basically clam up and not want to answer anything. And that was Assange. And he said, I took notice. I took notice that like I could say, all right, you're doing bad on Freedom of Information Act and getting things to journalists. Uh, journalists are upset. They're not getting enough press conferences. They want to be able to have the officials stop forcing them to get quote approval like two and three times before they can include something from an official in a news story. Things that are actually important, but you know, pale in comparison to what's happening with Julian Assange and the effect it could have on freedom of the press and freedom of expression around the world as they continue to pursue this case. And you, you can't get a single official in the Biden administration to speak to this issue. And they'll hide behind this thing of like, well, it's a pending case, so we can't comment on it. But the fact of the matter is that that didn't stop people like Secretary of State Antony Blinken from weighing in years ago when it was a possibility that the U.S. government could bring charges. Um, and there are people who have been in the U.S. government who have commented against Julian Assange and have endorsed prosecuting him. And there's a really, really disturbing line that I think has taken hold of Democrats. And we saw it uh, represented by this article that was published at NBC News in the last few weeks uh, by a former, I believe he was in the FBI. Um, his name's Frank Figliuzzi. And he wrote this thing about how uh, it would be a good to, it would be good to see Julian Assange brought to the United States. Basically he rehash this pipe dream that Democrats have. It would be good to bring Julian Assange to the United States 
so that the FBI could interrogate him and we could get to the bottom of what was going on with Donald Trump. And then I suppose reopen the Mueller investigation and there'd be a whole lot of tipping points that this fantasy, this is a, like a literal fantasy that these former police state people essentially have about what they could do with Julian Assange. And I think it's ridiculous, first off, not be like not only because it you know you don't extradite somebody so you can interrogate them, um, but you have to like actually have crimes. So it's really bizarre because they don't necessarily come out and say that they're for prosecuting Julian Assange. They just seem to be okay with lawfare of like using the prosecution in order to get Julian Assange into the US government's clutches. But then beyond that, look at how much Julian Assange has resisted. For the last decade, do you think he's suddenly going to do an about face now and cooperate with the U.S. government and talk to them after every little ugly thing they've done to him? I, I, w- I wouldn't think he would you would lose dignity if you were cooperating with any prosecutors or FBI agents at this point. So it's just utterly absurd. But this is this thing that like they they don't have a defense for the prosecution. So you have people who are aligned with the Biden administration who put out these pipe dreams and fantasies in order to get people to justify the Assange prosecution. Yeah, I mean, well, we've always been, you know, advocates for the the dropping of this case because there really is no case. And anybody who understands this knows that there's really no case. But what never ceases to amaze me is that nobody it's like we're just it's acceptable that he's being held. Why is he being held? Like, even if you were pursuing these cases, right? These are nonviolent crimes. This is not somebody who is a threat to other people. This is not somebody that should be being incarcerated. And and that, to me, is what really speaks to the, like, nefarious motives that are involved. Because if this were really about the justice aspect of it, really, then there's no reason for him to be incarcerated pending a, a criminal charges. Uh, so that to me just speaks to, they're just trying to kill him. And it, this goes back to Hillary Clinton bl- outright saying, why don't we just bomb them? Like, why don't we just bomb Julian Assange? Like the fact that somebody who ran for president of this country would speak that way. And it's just so flippant. So to me, when I look at this, they're just trying to kill him because, and have it look somehow legitimate. And then the United States is also extremely petty and spiteful. And we're, we're about sticking it to people more than doing what's the right thing to do. It's the same way how we deal with Cuba. And it's just like, I see it all over the place. And that to me is what this Assange case is. It's sort of a pissing match out of spite that they're just seeing how long they could go on with this, but it has no basis to it. Thanks for watching. If you want to support our mission to transform politics into service, please like this video, subscribe, follow us on social media, and consider joining our Patreon, where you'll get early access to our interviews as well as other exclusive content. Links are in the description. Peace out.